Hi everybody, thanks for joining me on my channel and thanks to all to my subscribers. I appreciate that extremely well. So if you haven't done, please click down below the like and subscribe to the channel because it helps us a great deal. So this subject is going to be which heating system should be in which house because I don't know why, but I get an awful lot of emails and comments from places. I think I've got the wrong heating system. So I'm going to cover the t the two, three types of houses. So we're going to start with bungalow being the smallest, semis, three bedroom semis, which is the most popular way to live in the UK, if not the planet, and then detached houses. So I'm going to leave out tower blocks and I'm going to leave out apartments in tower blocks because they're completely different things. Look out also to the end where I'm going to tell you which heating system is the worst on the planet and it's only available in the United Kingdom. So there's a, there's a clue. What's the worst? And the other thing I'm going to talk about is new build. I've been looking at some new developments and having to look at their heating systems so if you're buying a house in 2025 onwards i'm going to show you what you might get and more importantly what you're not going to get is it efficient boilers and systems whoa what do you think this is britain british builders are you going to get highly efficient heating systems stay tuned Thanks for watching and don't forget, take care. These are the three types of houses that we're going to talk about. Firstly, we'll start from the smallest bungalows, somewhere between 80 and 100 square meters, as my colleagues across the channel always use. And we'll see the different types of heating that should be there and what you may find there and which is the best and the worst. Then we'll go to three bedroom semi. As I said, it's the most popular type of building in the UK stroke Europe. And that will be somewhere between 100 and 120 square meters. And then finally, we'll have a good look at the larger property, the four bedroom detached house and what type of systems they should have because obviously they're going to have a huge area footprint of 120 to 160 square meters and they will definitely need a highly efficient system now bungalows have a beautiful loft which is perfect for putting ductwork and here's an example from a warm air heating system with water from Johnson & Starley, who are based in Northampton. And they are the market leaders and the expert. They've always been that. I'm, I highly recommend them. The good thing about warm air, it can be recycled and filtered. So if you've got breathing problems, this is the answer because there are no bugs. You get wall-to-wall -wall heating, beautifully filtered, and it's very cheap to install and even more so it has the lowest running costs so you can blow warm air or cool air even in the summer to cool the whole house down and gradually warm it up to maybe 20 22 degrees and everything in between so that's why it's the most popular way in america canada and australia Unless anybody knows differently, that's what I've seen, because I've been there. So obviously they must know something we don't. We don't put warm air into bungalows, and we should do. It's the best. When it comes to a three-bedroom semi or a large bungalow, whether it's a semi or not, the ideal system there would be a combi boiler and radiators. It's quick, cheap and easy. The good thing about this is the fact that it serves one bath, one basin, one kitchen sink and one shower. So if you've got that in your dwelling, a combi and radiators is by far the best and the easiest way to go. When we talk about a large three bedroom semi or detached house with an extension or a four bedroom house, all totally in somewhere around 160 square meters then we've got to consider zoning so one zone will be the hot water cylinder that's going to be obviously unvented because we're not allowed tanks in the loft 
The other zones would be maybe downstairs, would be underfloor heating, and I'll come to that in a minute, or it could be radiators. The next zone could be the upstairs bedrooms. Another zone could be an extension where you've got a home office or a kid's playroom or a garage, and you want that area heated separately. So that would be yet another zone. Very easy to do and very cost effective because then you can heat whichever zone you want at the same time. So it's a win-win situation for large dwellings. The worst heating system is, as you can see, two tanks in the loft. One large one, which is basically a swimming pool for rats and birds. When I used to go up there, I had to take a bucket and plastic bags to remove them because they were also always drowned in them. And that's where that water goes into the cylinder and people wash their hair, brush their teeth in that contaminated water. Also, the other thing is, of course, it's temperature. In the summer, that water is boiling and algae starts to form. And again, you, people are washing their teeth and the hair in that algae water. It's disgusting. In the winter, it's extra cold. So when that filters down into the cylinder below, the blue one, then the boiler has to work even harder to warm up that extra cool water. So it's a disgusting and, and unhygienic way. And that's why it's been banned all over the planet. But it is still available in the UK because the British government and builders love it because it's, I don't know why, they still love it. And the little tank is pumping over. And I get endless emails and videos I've made about pumping over sludge and rust because they're often installed incorrectly. So that's the worst system anyone can buy. And as I said, only available in the United Kingdom. When it comes to underfloor heating, I think that's the best. It's wall to wall. So therefore there's no radiators hanging on the wall, nothing to rust, nothing to sludge, nothing to drain down. It's all clean, quiet and efficient. The boiler does hardly any work because, as you can see, the water temperature there is 30, maybe 35 for a larger room or area. Whereas a normal boiler with radiators, the minimum is 60, but often 70, 75 degrees. So obviously the boiler is going to burn a lot more fuel for a lot longer period. So underfloor is the best way. And when I was looking with my cousin in Poland a couple of months ago, I was amazed almost every house we went to, new build and old build, is all under floor. It's very, very rare these days that Poland, Germany, France and so on hang radiators. It really is. They're all under floor because it's an obvious cost saving. In the UK, we don't seem to be pushing that much. And I think that's a mistake. There's money to be made here for installers and a lot of money to be saved by end users. It's a win-win situation and people love it. I've got it, and Mrs. Comby absolutely adores walking on a warm floor. I just wanted to comment on air source heat pumps. Uh, I've done a video on this, and I can't see the benefits at all, because you've got an installation cost there of sixteen to £20,000. That's a huge amount of money to pay for a little bit of heating and hot water. As you can see by the picture on the right, you have to, you have, to have a large hot water cylinder, 200, 300 litres, and you may only need... 50 to 80 for a day but you're going to get 300 and all the rest of the pipe work and don't forget that that fan outside is going to be whirling 24 hours of a day so you're going to get noise from that and it's going to wear out because anything that moves wears out so i don't see any benefits in these at all um i've let i've yet to be convinced you can't put them in flats listed buildings not allowed as far as i know and a lot of places just won't have them at all so i don't know why the government's pushing you don't get them in new build as as you will see in my video coming up on on new houses they won't they won't install them why if it's such a fantastic thing why can't you, why isn't it included well there's a clue there's a definite clue for that and how long will they last? Well, the same as a boiler. Boiler will last a good 12, maybe 14 years, maybe 15, if it's well looked after. And having to spend another maybe 15,000 
in 10 years time or so is not a good thing I, not something I want to get into so I don't understand why this country is pushing air source heat pumps there's nothing good about it at all Please subscribe to my channel because as you can see I'm in the middle of making this video on new builds and what you can expect in a house in 2025 or maybe a year old. Would you get solar panels in the roof, air source heat pump or underfloor heating? What do you think? We're talking about Britain, British builders. Are they the top of the range? <laughs> oh, that's a joke, isn't it? Anyway, look out for my video. So if you can help me out, that would be terrific. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, installers, we've got our apps on both markets. All very popular, all been updated and highly recommended for each installation to check the gas rate, ventilation and... Also, the pipe sizing one, which is absolutely brilliant. So don't forget, download them from whichever place that you normally go. Also, another reminder, don't forget our two books in hard copies. Both books, just £40, no VAT, includes postage and padding to UK postcodes only. Thanks for watching and take care.